was the day Brett died. So on that morning, we're getting ready for to go to the track, and we had a friend come pick us up. And Brett was being his typical playful self, messing around, and he was blowing up these balloons. And I remember it being super early, and I really didn't want to get out of bed, but I thought, you know, I just, I got to go down. So I went downstairs, ran out there in my pajamas, and he was playing around with balloons. He um, would always love to do, like, pull little pranks on us. I would be doing homework or in the kitchen, and he would think it would be funny to come up behind you and he'd have a toothpick and he'd just pop the balloon in your ear just to get a screech out of you. <laughs> At the time, we were like, okay, Brett, enough with the balloons. You know, we get it. You enjoy popping them. And uh, as we loaded up in the truck, he had one blown up and he gave it to Kathy. And said, Mom, hold this for me till I get home. And I said, okay, honey, have fun. Have a great day. So that was, uh, he just was really into balloons for some reason. I don't know because he liked to pop them. I know he liked to inhale a little helium once in a while, make a funny voice, but balloons were his thing. And little did I know, you know, that balloon was gonna be very special to us. So a few weeks before the accident, Kathy and I were in the backyard and we were just enjoying our yard, nice swimming pool. And, and Kathy was lounging out in the pool water and made a comment to me. I was just floating around, looking up at the sky. And I was telling Jim how wonderful my life was, how, how fulfilled I felt and how content, how I just felt like it couldn't get any better. Couldn't get any better. So we knew right away that he had a, a, a God gift talent at riding motorcycles. At the starting gate, he'd take off and he'd be ahead of the kids and um, he would slow down or he'd even pull over. And we'd run up to him, what's wrong, what's wrong? And he goes, oh, nothing, I'm just taking a break. I'll let my friends catch up to me. It's like, that's not really the concept of racing. And as he began to ride, he got better. And he passed what I could teach him by the time he was five or six. So we hired a training coach. And we'd practice a couple of nights a week with him. And then we'd start going to the local races, traveling around all across the country, we bought a motorhome, uh, loaded up the two girls, the dogs. Everybody went and we went and watched Brett race and traveled around the country and he really began to become pretty good. He was rated in the top 10 kids in the nation. So the day of the track, as I said, when we left that morning, and uh, it was a typical day. We had some riders out there. Brett had done, done his practice sessions and we're getting ready to go and he wanted to go out one more time. But he had to come in and get another pair of goggles because um, what we call a squid, uh, a guy can't ride very well, went through a mud puddle and splashed a bunch of mud up on Brett and Brett couldn't see. So he came in and he told me, Dad, I just want to go one more time. So I put a new pair of goggles on him, told him I loved him and sent him on his way. And he got to the back section of the track and I was loading things up. And there was a, the guy we went to the track with was standing in front of the truck and I noticed two guys on a motorcycle had ridden up and they were talking to him. And I could see they were pretty panicked and they're looking around and Steve turned back to look at me. And right away I knew something was wrong. And I knew Brett was towards the back of the track. So I just took off running. I could look in the distance, I could see Brett laying on the track. And right then and there, I knew he was gone already. God told me right then and there that uh, he has him now. And for me, to, for me to go to him, hold him, but it's gonna be okay. And people are coming over and they're praying around Brett and around me. And I won't say I was calm, but I just had a sense of calming around me. And we waited for the paramedics to show up and they got Brett and they loaded Brett up in the truck, in the, in the ambulance. And I had to make that call to Kathy at home to tell Kathy that we just lost our little guy. So I dialed the number and uh, Kathy answered the phone. And that's what I told her. I said, honey, we just lost our little guy. I can still hear the screams today. So we get to the hospital and Brett was just uh, laying on a bed 
and he looked like he was sleeping. And I just stared at him waiting for his chest to rise. I thought, you know, I can wish him back. I'm his mom, I love him. I, my love is gonna, you know, he's gonna wake up. And I just kept kissing his cheeks. We kissed him and kissed him and kissed him and touched his hand and to the point where he, he was warm on his face. We got home and there was just a lot of people, a lot of commotion. Everybody had already heard about Brett and the accident. My dad took us upstairs and sat us down on his bed. And uh, I wanted to ask him where they were at after what we just had happen. Our lives turned upside down and I needed to know where we were gonna do and, and how we were gonna handle this. And so I shared with them what my thoughts were that I said, listen, we can get mad at God for what happened. Or we can lean on God and put our trust and our hope in Him and find our joy in Him and in His promises. And I need to know where you guys are at because I'm going to turn and lean more on God and ask for God to help us get through this. But the only way we're going to do that is if we're all on the same page. So I need to ask all you guys where you're at. And then my mom followed and said, I choose Jesus. And it came to me and I said, I choose to continue to love God and follow Him and lean on Him. And lastly was my sister. And I felt nervous because her answer took a lot of time to come out. In the time when my dad was asking us that, I was thinking, okay, I know the struggles I'm having right now and I'm angry at God and I'm trying to turn away from Him and turn my back to Him. And I can just imagine what this road will be like if this is how I continue to handle it. I um, told my dad, you know, I'm going to give it all to God. Um, I'm going to open up my heart and um, try to let God speak to me because I know he has been. He's been pulling on my heart and I've just been so shut down and so angry that I haven't let anything in. So since I believe that day, that was a turning point to... Um, my journey with all this. So we held hands and we prayed and we recommitted ourselves to a life with Christ and following Him and finding our peace in Him and ultimately finding peace in the hope and the promise that we're going to see bread again in heaven one day. Well, a few days after Brett had passed away, my mom went into Brett's room and in his closet found that little green balloon that he had blown up and given to her on the day that he died. One day I was thinking, that's his air in there. Like, we could breathe his breath. So I got the family together and we poked a little hole towards the top so it wouldn't pop, but we could let, let the air out. So each of us took a breath in of this balloon so we could have Brett's final breath. Our plan, it's not always the same plan as God has, but God has a plan, and it's a good plan. And as things come out of the passing of Brett, a lot of good things have come out of it. Over 1,500 people attended his funeral. We ran into a family at, at the grocery store that uh, Kathy was wearing a Brett shirt. We have a safety foundation that we started, and she was wearing a Brett 38 shirt. And the lady said, oh, did you know Brett Downey? Kathy said, yeah, I was his mom. And the lady thanked her and said that they came to Brett's funeral, that they knew him through a connection. And they brought another family with them in their neighborhood. And that whole family found the Lord because of that. They came to the service, saw the gift of, of what God has for us, and accepted Christ that day. And, and the lady was telling us how they still go to church and are uh, active in church because of that. All because of that little boy. And uh, you look back at those moments, and that's when you realize what God's plan was for Brett. Not quite what Kathy's and I planned was for Brett, but what God's plan was for Brett. Life is short. You can live life at your speed, or you can live life at God's speed.